Uh, hi, hi folks, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. My name's Sean, aka Uncle Frogface, and welcome to today's video. If you're new here, then welcome. If you're not new, then welcome back. So today, I have another craft kit for you. That's right. Recently went out shopping to the works. And uh, if you don't know, The Works is a shop in the UK that has books and craft kits and toys and all sorts, relatively cheap. Um, this was even cheaper than expected. So they do these, these craft kits and they're usually seven pound each or two for 10 pounds. This was reduced even further to just three pound 50 and it is a fabulous needle felting bird edition. Um, so it comes with a little book uh, the needle felting um, tools that are needed and the roving and uh, the everything to make this little robin here. So I've never done needle felting before. It's one of the few needle crafts that I've never tried. So while I was out and, and I saw it, I thought, why not give it a shot and uh, you can see how much of a disaster or not this is gonna be. So I'm gonna turn the camera around. We'll open this up and see exactly what's inside. So here we are, this is the, the kit as is. I'll just show you the box. So once you've mastered a couple of basic needle uh, needling techniques, you can create whimsical or realistic creations, perfect for gifts or just as a wonderful keepsake. And it says felting needles, felt mat, roving wool, polystyrene, robin, or just polystyrene bird. Uh, but let's actually crack it open. Have I got something sharp? Everything's been packed away. My art, art supplies, I'm such an art goblin. I've got literally three packing boxes full of art supplies. Um, okay. Ugh. Let's have a look. So again, a massive box for not much in there. Not great for the environment, but let's have a look. So we have a 48 page book. That's gonna take me some time to read. That's our roving, that looks like Quite a lot. Is that a lot? Is that a little? I, I don't know. How much am I going to be using? Um, what else do we have? We have... Okay, these are our needles. They should look very pointy, very stabby. Uh, that is our little robin base. Is there anything else in there? No, that's it. That, that's everything. So, great big box. Just a few little supplies. Just a bugbear of mine. But, um, okay, so this is nice. Nice little sponge. This is nice as well. Um, should I take these out before I've read the book? Probably not a good idea. Um, ow, ow, ow. They are very, very sharp. What is the age limit on this kit? Oh, I didn't even look. Does it have a four ages or over? Let's see. Um, Oh, 14 and over, so definitely not for kids. Uh, I don't know if I could be trusted with this. Right, okay, I think I'm gonna have to look through this book. It, it, it's it got nice pictures, looks like a very nicely made book. How much of it is instructions? Ugh. Okay, hold on a second. <laughs> Well, I have to say that was actually more thorough than I was expecting for a, a book in a crafting kit. Usually it's this cheap. You get a sheet of paper with minimal instructions on them. But actually, we flick through. I'll just show you, we've got uh, the introduction. We've got a kind of before you start warning about uh, needles and tools and stuff. Uh, then we've got different tools. So. It says that instead of using this pad thing, you can use this brush and the fibers are less likely to stick. Different types of wool that you can use. Armatures, polystyrene shapes, fiber fill. So we've got a basic technique, how to needle felt. It also says in here somewhere that uh, having damp hands is helpful. So finally, sweaty hands pays off. <laughs> and then we've got top tits, which actually 
it's almost exactly the same as the how to needle felt or just a slightly different wording um then we've got basic shape guide so how to make some basic shapes and then we're straight into the robin and and how to use the supplies that are in the kit to make a robin and i think actually there might be more roving here that, than is needed for this which i mean we'll test that but that that would be great to actually have more than you need rather than having to find more which usually happens with craft kits but if we carry on there are other birds in here as well. So obviously we don't have the colours to do them. But if you wanted to experiment and do other birds, there's a blue tit. Uh, there's a chaffinch. There's an owl. Also says about basic bird shapes. Uh, and instructions for all of these. A mallard. Collared dove. Green woodpecker. Red leg partridge. And my favourite, which I'm going to have to do at some point. A flamingo. I think this is going to need a wire armature in it. But... Um, I mean, that, that that just looks, look at that. How can you not love that? I'm gonna have to make that at some point. So actually, really, really good instructions. Surprisingly good instructions. Um, now it's time to go ahead and start using the kit. So first things first, I had to unravel this roving. So it comes like uh, kind of like skeins of yarn and it's all like a big long tube and you just tear bits off. So if you cut it, apparently you get sharp edges and it doesn't knit together very well. So you just pull it apart and just kind of, it's like pulling apart cotton wool. It was really, really quite satisfying. So the first part of the instructions was just to cover the whole base of the robin in the brown coloured roving. So you put down a little patch, stab, 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 stab all over and knits together and knits into the polystyrene base as well. Of course, being very careful not to stab yourself in the fingers. Uh, these needles are incredibly sharp. That's why it's for 14 years and over. So. From what I read in the book, um, and as I said, I'm by no means an expert. This is the first time ever doing needle felting, but roving, all of the fibres have little scales on them. So this is kind of like raw yarn. This is what you would use to spin wool. Um, so that's full of scales. And these needles actually have little barbs on them. So as you stab through, the barbs cause these scales to knit together and create a kind of matted effect. Felt. That's where felt comes from. Uh, that's obviously why it's called needle felting. So I know there are different ways of, of making felt, but this is kind of one of the, the earliest ways. And we just stab, stab, stab. At this point, it looked like uh, it had a little wispy haircut. <laughs> uh, and I can see there are a few bald patches, but I wasn't really worried about it. As you stab more and more and more, it knits together more and more and more. It becomes just this kind of firm, fabric-y texture. Um, it's, it's quite magical, actually, <laughs> seeing it come together like that. I, I was really surprised at how quickly it came together. I was expecting to be here stabbing for absolutely hours. The other thing about it is you can kind of sculpt a little bit as well. So I went around the edges of the beak just to kind of really knit that together. Oh, that's where I stabbed myself. Um, yeah. Thankfully didn't puncture the skin too badly, but uh, still quite painful. But it, it knit together really nicely and it said to sculpt out the tail a little bit more. So I added a little bit more with a little bit of extra length and folded it back on itself and just knitted it into itself rather than the polystyrene. And it just extended that tail a little bit more. And there we are. That is all covered in the base colour of the brown now. So the next part obviously being a robin is the iconic red breast so uh, the, the sponge pad was actually quite useful for not letting this roll about the desk it was it's quite nice it kind of held on to the piece so I'm just taking small tufts laying them down and stabbing them into place and you can manipulate this quite nicely and create shapes and, and lines and things like that so it's kind of got a painterly feel to it in like this is where I want to lay down my color so pop it down stitch it into place, stab it into place, and then it stays there. Really, really satisfying. Um, so that's the whole of the red breast done, I think. Yes, now we're moving on to, we've got white and grey. So at the sides, kind of underneath the wings, robins have white underneath their tails and along the edge of the, the red breast, and they have a bit of grey in there as well. So by laying this on quite thinly, 
it, it gives a kind of opaque effect, so it kind of, uh, you can increase or decrease the amount of opacity that you have with the yarn and with the roving that you're laying down. So I wanted to give this a little bit more of a wispy feel, so I'm not putting it on as thick. I'm putting it on a bit thicker under the tail, um, but I'm using it a little bit lighter there. And then I wanted some of this grey as well, just to add a little bit of variety to the colour. And again, just laying it down, nice and wispy, nice and loose. And then stab, 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 stab. I was really worried at one point that the polystyrene um, armature underneath was just going to crumble with the amount of stabbing that I was doing. But I suppose as the roving goes through, it actually knits into the polystyrene as well, so it makes it nice and firm. And again, here I'm coming back in with some red just to blend that edge so it's not such a, a kind of harsh line. And you can see the more you stab, the less kind of fluffy it is and the more firm it becomes. Okay, so I'm adding a little bit of red to the cheeks, just like that. And uh, I think we're just about to do the final pieces. So we've got the eyes and the beak. So the eyes were well, simple enough, it said just to make little balls and secure them in place. So I tried stabbing them first to create little balls, but actually I had way too much. And I thought, mm, I'll just pop it onto the face and stab it into place and manipulate it while I'm there. So that's what I did, popped it into place. And you can kind of, even when you're felting it together, you can manipulate it into really nice shapes. So the eyes worked really well. I just did exactly the same for the other eye. And then we come to the beak. So. It said to make a little cone and then secure that to the face and I I wasn't confident with uh, making anything on the pad and then putting it on so I decided just to go straight onto the face and stab it into place and um, it wasn't great to start with I think I had too much so I just pinched some off which was and now it looks like a hummingbird with a massive long beak um, but once I'd reduced the amount of black roving that I had I was able to, to secure it where I wanted it and then just go around and by stabbing in different directions and diagonally into the piece was able to over time shape that beak shape that I wanted um, and with my fingers as well I could manipulate it and then stab it so that it was secured into place and there we go this is the, the last little bits here and we end up with this this nice little beak on the front so it said that you could stab around the um, the edge of the wing to make it more pronounced. But I thought, actually, let's just build it up a little bit. So I took a little bit more of the brown, did a little twist in it to make a kind of little tube, and then stabbed that to secure that in place. And you can see it kind of gives just a little bit of extra dimension to that wing so it's not as flat. So if you stab one side, one side will felt in and the other side will just stand proud. And there we have it. After about an hour of stabbing and stabbing and stabbing, we end up with this, this little guy. And actually, I'm really impressed. I really... So, not only am I impressed with the finished product, I and the instructions that came along with it as well to get to that point, the the actual activity itself is really fun uh, particularly if you're i don't know moving house and really stressed out <laughs> um, if you've got any kind of stress in your life and you just want to stab something uh this is brilliant it was so much fun just to sit there for let's say about an hour and just stab 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 it's kind of a it reminds me a little bit of sculpting a little bit of painting it's kind of somewhere in the middle um, and this, I think, will be a lovely little kind of Christmas ornament that we'll bring out every year and, and maybe put on the tree. So, this kit was £3.50. Really good book. Love the instructions. It came with the base for the robin, two needle felting needles, a little foam pad uh, so you're not stabbing your desk. And this is how much roving we have left. I mean, this is almost the same amount as we started with. There, there is so much here. You could do so many more products with this. I'm, I'm honestly blown away with this craft kit. For, for the price, it is just mm, lovely. 
Um, but I really hope you've enjoyed today's video. I really hope you enjoyed this little guy. If you want to give him a name, pop any comments down below, suggestions for a name for him or her. Him? Him. I think that the males have red breasts. Um, I'm not an ornithologist. <laughs> I really hope you've enjoyed today's video. And until next time, goodbye.